back to Lucro Automotive Services. Today we're putting something together that's been apart for a long time, but we're picking up the engine from the machine shop tomorrow. Time to put it back together. I'm put a fresh engine back in this car. It's a friend of mine's vehicle. He's owned it since it was brand new. If any of you guys out there have one of these uh, passenger's front turn signal lenses for a Celica GTS, please let me know because we need one. At any rate, I'm going to start putting this car back together. Engine's been out of it for a while. The machinist just finally got our engine put back together. We're going to pick it up in the morning and I'll start putting this thing back together so that we can drive this thing this spring. In the meantime, I'm gonna let it thaw out overnight so that I won't be getting dripped on near as much tomorrow. See how, see how your grouping is. Y'all are killing it. We're helping, we're cleaning the car off. And then you get Luke for it right in the middle. Who's going to hit the boss today? <laughs> Ready? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> you up? I am still waiting on some parts for this thing. We are going to go ahead and drop the engine down into the engine bay, get it bolted up, get our new clutch and flywheel installed. And then we'll keep whittling away on it as our parts show up. But I should be able to get it about 90% of the way. I've got a new radiator. I'm waiting on an upper hose, thermostat, and a couple other minor bits. So no big deal. Let's get the engine in the rails and keep moving forward. Get this thing back together. So we had our flywheel reserviced. It is a stepped flywheel, so it is a two-step process. We got a machine X amount off of the main surface to improve your clutch surface, and then you have to take the same amount off the step. This is externally balanced, so it's probably an irregular bolt pattern, so it should only go on one way. I need my light to see. So my flywheel seated. That's only like 96 inch pounds on that setting. So I'll grab my flywheel holder and my torque wrench. We'll torque down our flywheel bolts. And we'll put on our clutch. Oh, but my pilot bearing feels okay, but it's original, so I'm just gonna replace it. And a brand new bearing. Put our new pilot bearing in. And then we'll put on our clock. Cleaned off my flywheel surface, cleaned off my 
flex plate. Got my flex plate bolts. My flywheel bolts are torqued. My pilot bearing has been replaced. The clutch does have a flywheel side and a gearbox side, so we will install it correctly. Basically on this one you could install it backwards. A lot of times you can't. This one states gearbox side on this side. And I will need my installation tool, my alignment tool here in a minute. which holes I'm supposed to be using. I think it's those. That'll work better. Works better when you put it in the right hole. This guy just goes in here and goes into the pilot bearing. And I always like to Lift it up just a hair while I'm tightening it down because when I pull this in and out, I just want it to be as little resistance as possible. It lets me know that everything's lined up the way, as, as good as I can get it at any rate. So I like to get it so that it just slides nice and smooth in and out without any drag. So again, I'll do a crisscross pattern. I'll tighten them down to a very light torque and then I will tighten them down with a torque wrench book states 11 to 15 foot pounds if I remember correctly. Let's see how that's nice and smooth. There's no drag. It's right where I want it. Those are all pretty close. Nice and smooth. I like it. Throw that in the trash because you'll never use it again. It'll just sit in your toolbox. And if you do get another clutch kit, there will be one in it. All right, so, torque wrench. All right, around the world we went. Put on my fuel line, tighten that guy. I had not tightened it down yet. That's what happens when you get distracted by people coming up and asking you to do stuff all through the day. You're in the middle putting them together and then you forget to tighten the bolts. And then you have a recheck. Because you left stuff loose. You wake up in the middle of the night saying, did I tighten that? I don't remember. And then you come in the next day and you double check everything. Figure out whether you left it loose or not. So, we are basically ready to drop this in the car. Let me find my banjo bolt for my fuel filter, because it's easier to put that in here than it is in the car. And we'll drop her in. Awesome.
this is why with stick shifts it's often easier to pull the transmission out of the bottom of the car, put the engine into the car, and then put the transmission back into the car. I need to get the shaft in another inch. <laughs> Let's not, give her a little push. I'm, I'm not on the splines yet, so I'm not in deep enough. Give, give her a push. Wiggle it. Put give it her a in push. and wiggle it and jiggle it. Get that depth. Uh, I think your 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 sense of measurement's a little off there. Uh, it's more like two inches. Little white guy, I think you're. <laughs> I, think, I think you're one inch, more like two inches. Little. little Everything's off. bigger than you think it is. <laughs> that's, that's only one inch away. More, more like two and a half. More like two and a half. So I'm making headway on the Toyota Celica GTS. The engine's in. It's bolted up. I've got everything hooked up that I can hook up at this point. I'm getting ready to drop in a new radiator because I'm still waiting on a couple small items like an upper hose and a thermostat and a couple other things that I have coming. And as soon as I get here, those will be the last bits to this puzzle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in my new radiator because the old radiator was gross and full of rust and corrosion and I don't want to run that through all the all my new stuff. New water pumps on. I've got new belts. I'm really just down to the last few items. Um, so I should be able to drop the radiator in, put the air box and mass airflow sensor in. And then it's just down to upper hose and thermostat. So hopefully as soon as those show up, show up this thing will be running. Making progress. We like it. A brand new radiator I'm pretty happy about. It looks to be correct. And it was available. And it looks like everything's right. As you can see, this thing was, it was pretty gross. see the sludge that was in the radiator we don't want that going back in this car holy cow it fits like almost like it was made for it awesome Awesome. Well, got my hood back on the Toyota Celica GTS. Um, I'm actually still waiting for one part, but this is a production shop, so I need to move this guy out the door. I got another car to come in here, and we'll let you know what that is here shortly. I still have a few things to do. Mostly, I need to give this thing a much needed bath, and then probably a coat of wax, Miyagi style, wax on, wax off. Um, but hey, it's come a long way. Really close to giving it back to the customer. I do need to do a proper engine break-in run, but the camshaft actually measured out perfect, so we're using the original camshaft and rocker arm assemblies. So, but the break-in procedure is mostly just to seat the rings and 
make sure that we have any leftover machining materials and get those flushed out of the engine. Fresh engine oil, fresh engine filter, we'll cut the old filter open, make sure we don't have anything bad going on, which I don't think we will. And then this car is ready to go. It's exciting. Long time coming. Excited to see this one back on the road. Well, thanks for watching our show. This is our little bid on a 1985 Toyota Celica GTS. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below.